Let's go! Stock up, stock down. These are the winners so far of the LSU spring practice. And potentially a few names that's going to have to step it up if they expect to play a lot in the purple and gold. So, look, it is just spring practice. And I just love this photo. Look at the competition. Look at the eyes of these young men. They are ready to go to battle, and I'm loving it. Number five. Jay Ward. Not really a shock here. Jay Ward had a great end to 2020. He started the season playing injured, and then as the season went on, as he got healthier, he became a more dominant player, winning the Arkansas game for us with that blocked kick there at the end. So Jay Ward is getting some thought of being the starting safety next season alongside potentially Todd Harris, but that's the good thing about Jay Ward is that he has the real potential to play anywhere in the secondary. Reminds me a lot of Jalen Mills. At number four, two guys, Mason Smith and Bug Strong. Two guys that came in with a lot of hype. It doesn't shock us that they're having a great spring so far because they were so hyped up leading into the practices, but so far they're living up to their billing. So that's why I have been number four. As of right now, based on how the other players are talking about him, those two have potentially been the best players in spring. Number three gets a little bit interesting because these are players that haven't even stepped on campus yet. So you take a look at this image and you see John Emery in the gold number four uniform that is normally designated for quarterbacks and injured players you're not supposed to hit. And that's the problem, because our number three players are Armani Goodwin and Corey Kiner. Huge winners, and they're not even on campus yet. The two top 150 running backs that Kev Falk got in this last recruiting class, uh, this spring couldn't have gone any better for these two guys because even though they're not on campus and there are a lot of players that are ahead of them right now, well, the running back position has been a mess. For those that have kept up, you know about all the injuries that have been piling up to the LSU running backs room when they need healthy running backs to install the new Jake Pete's offense. And we've done a lot of breakdowns of the spring practice footage that LSU has released out to us. And you notice Jake Peets, along with Kev Falk, has been doing a lot of work with the quarterbacks throwing to the running backs. That is something LSU did not have in their arsenal last season. And that is something that they're going to want to have, especially considering Ed Orgeron wants to run a lot of five-man protection. And because of that, that means the running backs are going to go out on routes which was ultimately a deciding factor for LSU winning the 2019 National Championship because Joe Burrow and Clyde edwards helaire were so dominant throwing the football. So that's what Ed Orgeron wants to bring back. He wants five-man protection and a running back that can catch out of the backfield. But Ty Davis-Price has been banged up. He's not been getting a lot of work. Trey Bradford's been banged up. Josh Williams has been banged up. And John Emery overcoming the shoulder injury. So... It has left them with Corin Norman, a walk-on from Lafayette, getting a lot of snaps. Uh, with all due respect to Corin Norman, he's not an SEC-level starter. So, if you're Armani Goodwin and Corey Kiner, obviously you are Kev Falk recruits. You're going to come into a running backs room that didn't get a lot of work this spring. And, you know, running backs, because they get hurt so often and they're already hurt now... LSU is going to be very tentative with this position. Coming in at number two, the new coaches. And Ed Orgeron, you know, this is expected. We haven't even played a game yet. We knew the coaching staff was going to do well in these first couple of weeks. You know, you can't really judge them until games are actually played. But by all accounts, the new coaching staff has been a huge hit with the players, the coaches, administration, and so on and so on. And... It is now time for our number one performer so far in spring practice. And you really have to factor in where this player was before spring and where he is now. And that player is Anthony Bradford.
unbelievable. It really is. I did not expect this at all. We've never done a live stream where someone brought up Anthony Bradford, a four-star offensive guard who, quite frankly, hasn't really played all that much. And when you look at some of the other backup offensive linemen, well, there are other guys that we've actually seen play, like a Cam Wire. And I would have thought Marcus Doomerville would be the big winner of the spring. I've been told he's having a good spring so far. But Anthony Bradford has really surprised Ed Orgeron. Ed Orgeron did say that he expects to have the same starting five next season. But as many of you know, that starting five wasn't all that great. So with every winner with stock up, we got to look at the players whose stock is down. And I think this player (laughs) is one that we can all agree his stock is definitely free-falling, Cardell Thomas. Another offensive guard who came in that same class with Anthony Bradford. And Cardell Thomas was expected to be the next Lyle Collins. He was the most hyped offensive line recruit ever to come out of the state of Louisiana because of his viral YouTube clips. Well, he had his injury, the true freshman season. And then uh, there was questions about, you know, is he in playing shape right now? Now, look, it is still very early in his career. In fact, in theory, he still has four years of eligibility remaining, even though he's been with the program for two seasons. So it's going to be interesting to see how his career plays out. Now, we're only going to give you one more name, but it's not a name for stock down. It's actually a class. The 2020 class could be in a lot of trouble. They got a raw deal because of one NCAA rule. And look, it's a rule that NCAA, uh, they basically had to do it. The rule was you will not lose a year of eligibility if you decide to play in the 2020 football season, which basically meant seniors could have an extra year of eligibility. Now, How does that hurt the 2020 class? Well, a lot. Because of that, there were a lot of seniors who, last season for LSU, they're decent players, but they weren't even close to being even thought of drafted. So they decided to come back for an extra season, which takes up a lot of roster spots and snaps. And you'll see that here at the 2020 class. So the weird thing about college football, and we discussed this on live streams before, Uh, you know, a lot of true freshmen are expected to play right away, but in actuality, it's year two. That's the year where your 2020 class is expected to be starters and or top backups. So 2021, this is supposed to be the big year for the 2020 class, but it's because those seniors are coming back. They're taking up a ton of space on the roster. So you look at the 2020 class overall and there's actually a lot of guys that you know are playing a lot so what you're seeing now is a list of the 2020 players that you know are bona fide studs and or contributors based on what we saw last season and look this looks like a pretty daggum good recruiting class all the guys you've seen contributed to winning some football games for LSU last season. And look, some of those guys are three stars. A lot of those guys are five stars or high-level four stars. But what's fascinating is the long list of 2020 guys that, look, it's kind of tough for them right now to find playing time. And you go down this list, Philip Webb, Jordan Tolles, Jacoby and Guillory, Antoine Sampa, Marcus Dumerville, Trey Bradford, Josh White. Now, obviously, uh, a lot of you diehards are familiar with these names. Every single one of these names weren't just four stars. They were top 150 recruits. And normally the cutoff for a four star and a three star is about prospect number 350. So each and every one of these four stars are amongst the best of the four star prospects. And a lot of them are going to get caught in the middle here unless something drastically changes this spring. Then you have Eric Taylor, defensive tackle, Marlon Martinez, 
a guard. Alex Adams, a wide receiver who uh, there's rumors that he might move to safety. And then Xavier Hill, um, another three-star guard. You know, when you get three stars, you hope that they turn out to be four and five stars, but they're three stars for a reason. You know, that's what's really fascinating, though, is that of these players, there's a lot of really talented prospects. And once again, I'm not saying any of these guys are bust. It's just they've yet to get their opportunity. And because in the case of, let's say, Philip Webb, Andre Anthony is back for another season. Normally, Andre Anthony would be trying to go to the NFL right now. But because seniors can come back, you know, that's just some snaps that Philip Webb won't be able to get. The same thing is true for Jacoby and Guillory, a really good defense attack out of Alexandria. Um, Neil Farrell and Glenn Logan are back. So, and Mason Smith's coming in. So he could get caught in the middle. The same thing's true for Eric Taylor and so on and so on. Marcus Dumerville. He could be the starting right tackle if Austin Deculus would have gone to the NFL. So you notice I did not mention any quarterbacks in this video. I do think Max Johnson's had the best spring thus far. He's been running with the ones. And it's going to be hard to unseat him if you're Miles Brennan. Obviously, TJ Finley is still there. Garrett Nussmeyer has turned some heads. In fact, he tweeted out some photos from spring practice himself. So I, I think all that's fine and dandy. I still believe this is the Max Johnson or Miles Brennan show. And that's all we basically have to say from it. It's going to take something special for TJ Friend, for TJ Finley to break through those two. However, a really good thing would be to keep all four of these quarterbacks on the roster for day one. I'm not so sure if that's going to happen. Hopefully it does, and if it does, we'll, we'll see what happens. The good thing that LSU has in their favor is that last year didn't count against anyone's eligibility. So, you know, let's say T.J. Finley is the clear number three, and then there's still Garrett Nussmeyer behind him. There isn't as much of a need to transfer right now, especially this late in the process. I don't think really any younger quarterback would mind sitting a full year on the bench if it comes to that as much as in the past because – Last season did not count against your eligibility. So technically, let's just say TJ Finley doesn't play at all. This is his red shirt freshman season. And after this, he will still have four years of eligibility remaining. I hope you enjoyed this video today. Let me know, as always, what you think in the comment section. It is Power Hour LSU Boom! Ooh, pork chops tonight, let's go.